Hi, I'm Chris Fleming, the creator of Spirit Talk. You're listening to the podcast where I'll be bringing you the greatest thinkers, researchers, and contributors from around the world to discuss what we know in the field of the paranormal, life after death, and the pursuit of higher consciousness. has no facial features. He's just all in shadow, but I could tell and I could feel that he's looking right at me or through me or into my soul. Hey, it's Chris Fleming. Welcome back to Spirit Talk. You know, Halloween is just around the corner and a lot of people tend to talk about ghosts, spirits, haunted houses, but then also shadows, shadow people. I just had a conversation with somebody last week about a shadow person that they saw. And a lot of you know, my listeners, that I've seen shadow people since I was a little kid. So the one thing to keep in mind is, what are these shadow people? Well, let's talk about a specific one, the hat man. If you went online and you Googled shadow people, the hat man, watch what pops up in the image section. And then start clicking on them. And then you'll realize that there's people all over the world that have seen this dark, mysterious figure. Now, I remember for years, I was like, God, I've never seen this thing. You know, this is really interesting to me. It's, it's nice to know there's something out there I haven't experienced. And then I remember back in 2007, my girlfriend at the time, she had slept over. Middle of the night, she wakes me out of this deep sleep, screaming, terrified. She's shaking physically. She's like, oh my God, oh my God, there was someone at the edge of the bed. Someone at the edge of the bed. I go, what do you mean there's someone at the edge of the bed? What are you talking about? Oh, you just had a dream, a nightmare. She's like, no, 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 no. And then I go, all right, what did you see? She goes, well, it was just this, this big figure as a man standing like he had like an overcoat on and he had this hat on. I go, what'd you just say? He had a hat on. I said, what type of hat? She goes, well, this brim hat that kind of went around and, and she goes, I, it's a certain type of hat. I can't. So I calmed her down. I tried to make her think, oh, don't, don't worry about it. It was probably just a nightmare. But then when we had breakfast the next morning, I got out a piece of paper and a pencil. I said, draw what you saw. She drew it. And when I looked at it, I said, oh my God, it's the hat man. She was the what? The hat man. I go, what was it doing? She goes, it was just pointing at me, pointing. Are you sure it was pointing at you or maybe it was pointing at me, <laughs> right? She goes, no, it was just pointing. And I said, okay. I had no explanation. I didn't know what to tell her. And then one night on December 13th, 2014, seven years later, at about three o'clock in the morning, I'm going to close my shades in my bedroom before I go to sleep because I'm a night owl. I tend to go to bed two o'clock in the morning, one o'clock, three o'clock. So I'm closing the shades. As I'm closing the shade, I look through and I see, I I live right in the middle of a cul-de-sac. I see this man standing underneath the street lamp in the cul-de-sac. You could tell he's staring right at me. Solid black figure with an overcoat and a hat on. As I close the, I'm like, what the, holy cow, and I open it back up, and he's gone. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, I know what I just saw, I know what I just saw. I grabbed a piece of paper, and I know, and I tell all my listeners, when you've had an experience, and you've seen something, quickly grab a piece of paper and write it down, because as time goes by, you're going to forget those details. And I drew it. Now, this is such a mysterious topic that my next guest is going to give us some insight and some interesting stories about this mysterious man in black with the hat. Before I get to my next guest, I have a website where I offer a variety of services, such as spiritual consultations over the phone or face-to-face. I also do angel cards, and I can do a consultation session. But also I offer a Six Sense training course where I will work with you on your intuition, understanding the how, when, and why to improve and apply ESP while answering any questions you have towards your own psychic abilities. But then what about your path, your destiny? You feel lost, don't know what direction to go? Well, sign up for the Creating Your Definite Purpose course. We'll figure out your number one goal. We'll take a look at your current self and where you need to be to be your other self so that you can make these things happen. This one-on-one session is going to help you fulfill that desire. You'll write out a life plan, and I will show you how you can train yourself to put it to use. This can be done either face-to-face 
or on video Skype. Go to chris-fleming.genbook.com, take a look at the services, and book now. Kyle J. Macias is an inspiring filmmaker. Now, he specializes in narrative films and documentary films alike. But he's also an avid researcher and a paranormal aficionado covering a wide range of subjects, such as the occult, entity contact, and unknown realms. He has a new documentary coming out that is premiering on Vimeo and Amazon September 13, 2019. It's his first documentary feature. Guess what it's called? The Hat Man, Documented Cases of Pure Evil. It's covering the subject of the shadow people, specifically focusing in on the distinct figure the internet and eyewitnesses, as we're talking about right now, have dubbed the Hat Man. Kyle delved into the subject of shadow people back in 2008 when he learned that one of his own family members had an experience with the Hat Man. So throughout the duration of making this film, it came to Kyle's attention that the Hat Man is just not a figure seen in sleep paralysis or nightmares The eyewitnesses are adamant that they also see this figure in waking life, manifesting, like I just said, under street lamps, in the back of passenger seats, in the corner of the room, on the side of the road, peeking around corners, and in some cases, people have had physical attacks. Is the hat man hiding in the darkest places of our subconscious, or is he crossing over to our physical existence? Hey, it may be both. Kyle, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you for having me. I've uh, been a fan of your work for some time. It's an honor to be on your show. Well, no, thank you. And thank you for reaching out to me. When I saw your email, I'm like, oh my God, this is a great topic. There's mysteries around this. And I took a look at your trailer. And everybody listening, when you go to planetparanormal.com, where the podcast is, you can look right underneath the little summary of this podcast. There's going to be a link there. You can click on the link and you can see the trailer. Not only can you see the trailer, but you also can click on and be taken to Vimeo or Amazon and you can watch this documentary film. Well, when I saw this, Kyle, I was like, oh my God, I got to check this out. So I checked out your link. I watched this and I was just completely glued to saying, okay, I want to know more. I got to have this guy on. So thank you for you know taking a look at your schedule and jumping on with such short notice Let's get right into this, because I I want my listeners to hear what you have to say. How long did it take you to make this movie? Um, I really wanted to make it like (laughs) probably like in uh, like one year, but I had so many setbacks and I guess you can call them uh, attacks, maybe from like uh, the dark side or some pushback, maybe from these entities that didn't want this documentary to be out there. So it took me about two years to just Mm. finish the film when I just was aiming for uh, one year. Now, did you do this yourself? Do you have other people help you? How did you accomplish this? Um, yeah, with the interviews, I interviewed, um, it was just me and one camera guy. Um, and we interviewed the eyewitnesses um, around Los Angeles. And then um, everyone else that was from different parts of the, the planet. Um, I interviewed people from like Australia, Ireland, um, uh, the UK. Those ones were through Skype. Oh, that's great. Good for you, man. I know it's it's a... It's a big project to put together. Now, you were just mentioning, saying that you were running into certain challenges. Now, did anything strange or paranormal happen while you were making this film? Absolutely. So, yeah, we all hear those stories of the, you know, big, even big budget films. When they make a, a film about a topic, anything paranormal, they encounter strange coincidences or what, you know, what we might call synchronicities. And I got endless um amount of synchronicity is like uh, when I first just decided to make a documentary just on the hat man um, I started seeing um, 1111 everywhere 444 333 I don't know if you're familiar with those type of uh, synchronicities yeah Yeah. (laughs) and yeah we've talked about it on the show in the past and and a lot of my listeners has written in and, and saying that what they see the numbers too so yeah there is significance to that numerology but go ahead yeah so i would see those numbers and then um i had also a lot of maybe psychological warfare hit my psyche if that makes sense a lot of unnecessary depression and anxiety 
And then, um, but a lot of also um, manifestations of the hat man as well um, with my family. Not really me, but with people around me. Well, okay, talk about that then. Let's let's talk about your family because you had mentioned in your email to me that a family member, you found out when you started doing this, a family member has had an experience. So can you take us back to that story of what they told you? Absolutely, yeah. um, My aunt was on my mom's side she was one of the first to experience this hat man but we always thought it was like a family ghost or something or something connected to our lineage we didn't really or maybe a demon or shadow or ghost in general we don't know but um she explained her story um she said she was um, washing the dishes this is during the day and she had um her daughter in a baby car seat on the floor next to her while she was washing the dishes and on the corner of her eye, she seen some movement. So she turned her head and she said she's seen this um, hat man, basically, um, a guy like in a three piece suit, kind of like a coat, though, too, over it. And then um, he was just slowly looming over um, her daughter, which would be my cousin. And he had the wide brim hat and uh, the, he was just all in shadow. And she said she, uh, in this situation, she didn't really get a weird feeling but she thought it was strange and she was just watching just to make sure that it's not going to do anything to her daughter. And then, um, years later, um, my mom and my grandma see this same entity when they're coming home, um, after shopping for groceries. So they open the door and in this house, it's my grandma's house. Right. When you open the door, you're going to see the stairs. So they looked Mm -hmm. up, this is during the day as well. And the hat man was on top of the stairs. And he was just, they said you, they could feel his stare, even though he's in shadow, which was very odd. Holy cow. And then, yeah, and then they, um, my mom said their mind couldn't, they told me that their mind really couldn't comprehend what they were seeing, but they just kind of um, thought it was my uncle maybe in those clothes or something, but they even knew that was off. They just couldn't comprehend what they were looking at. And so my mom took one step up to walking toward this thing. And this hat man just rushed down the stairs. And as he rushed down the stairs, he like kind of turned into a wind or invisible. She just felt a gush of wind. And then he exited outside the door. So like something like passed right through her? Uh, Kind of more on the side. She just said that it kind of rushed down the stairs and it had thumps as if it was had boots or something. And then it Mm -hmm. went the force kind of turned into a gush of wind. Wow. You know, when you stated that. She had mentioned like it stares and you can feel it staring even though you can't see its eyes. That is identical to what I felt when I was looking out the window. Even though I couldn't see its eyes, I knew it was staring right at me. It's as if its consciousness, it was thought projecting right towards me like, hey, I'm watching you. And I freaked at first because, you know, I think anybody would freak even if you had a a real person physical solid person that was creeping around your house you would freak out right but then when you see this and in the back of your mind you're realizing oh my god i've heard about this thing before what is going on you you just kind of want to turn away and then turn back because you're turning away out of fear fight or flight but then you turn back to go wait a minute did i really see what i saw so have you found that other people have also felt that stare from this thing Absolutely. That's the biggest commonality with this hat man is that they say, you know, he has no facial features. He's just all in shadow, but I could tell and I could feel that he's looking right at me or through me or into my soul is the main thing. Okay. So you have talked to a lot of people and they've told you that. Have any of them suggested any theories or have you come to any theories of why he might be staring at these people? Um, it seems that if you wake up and you see the hat man in the corner of your room and he's projecting that, that stare to you, it's usually, it seems they feel like it's trying to put fear in them to feed off the energy of the fear. So he doesn't have to really do any work. It's just, he mostly just gives that feeling of intensity of stare and he kind of sucks off that. Right, right. Yeah, that's the mystery. And we're going to get in more of the mystery of what we think it might be a little bit later, but you were saying that you had some strange coincidences and uh, you felt oppression, depression when you were making this film. Did you have any attacks, any physical attacks, mental attacks that you know of? Yeah, one of the one of the main ones was, um, I guess you would call it a dream invasion, where uh, he was in my dream, my my dreams. 
Um, okay, yeah. And he did. It, it seemed as if it was like, um, well, I'll just tell the dream. Um, I woke up in my bed in the dream. So I'm not in reality. I'm in the dream in my bed. And then right. um, for some reason, there was a female in bed with me. And she told me, hold my hand and I'll show you my night terror visions or sleep paralysis visions she said what and i'm like you're being tricked okay i know and i was like well this would be a good idea for a movie if i could see what (laughs) how scary it would be so i was like yeah i'm kind of willing so i grabbed her hand and then she told me to close my eyes and if i close my eyes and open them i would look through her eyes right it was kind of bizarre but that's what she was telling me to do so um, I, clo- I held her hand, I closed my eyes, I opened them, and then I'm like, I don't see nothing, there's nothing here, it's just like a, a, a normal room. And then she's all, no, look this way, and she yanked my hand real hard to the left, and it yanked my body to look to the left, and when I looked to the left, the hat man was next to the bed, um, like a cape on, wide brim hat, and he had like a mm-hmm. half of a skull face this time, like missing the, missing the jaw. And then he tilted okay. his head like, like, oh, there you are. And then he went to choke me. And then I woke up saying, it's him, it's him. And then uh, my family came in the room saying, are you okay? Uh, this, was, this was like, this is in the middle of the night. And then they were saying, you said it, it's him, it's him while you were waking up. And I didn't remember saying that. I, I just woke up like scared. I didn't remember saying, it's him, it's him. So that was one of the, one of the attacks. Everything else was more like... Um, like I so happened to look at a poster and it has an image of the hat man on it. Or I turn on the TV and it's a document, uh, not doc, it's a, um, it's a TV show and, or, or, or an old Western that has the image of the hat man on it. Wow. In a lot of stuff like that. So all this synchronicity starts occurring because consciously you're spending a lot of time working on this and it is aware that you're working on it. Exactly. So it starts sending you messages like, hey, we're watching you too. Mm-hmm, exactly. And I, I, knew, I knew of that because I studied this stuff before, like the, uh, the men in black or the jinn yeah. and shadow people. And, I, and I, I knew what I was getting myself into. So when that was happening, I was like, yep, they're, they're aware of it now. Yeah, that's the conscious projection when you project it out there, just like a prayer They know it, so they come forward because they're saying, okay, well, who is this person that's thinking about us? Who's delving into our world, Uh uh, so to speak? Now, when you were doing this, because I haven't seen the documentary yet, and I'm going to go, I'm going to watch it when it comes out this week, but have you had any eyewitness send you real photos or any footage of the hat man at all? Yeah, that was one of the strange things uh, I I came across is one uh, one eyewitness, um, she never knew this, uh, her name's Tyann and she's in the film. She never knew that this hat man phenomena was a thing worldwide. And she just, like what you mentioned in the intro, she just one day had a thought of Googling the hat man for some reason. Mm-hmm. So she just Googled shadow man, or no, she Googled a shadow guy in a hat and coat. And she clicked, <laughs> she clicked enter and she said she her jaw dropped. She was blown away. She's all, that's exactly what I keep seeing. And she's all, and it got more creepy that other people are seeing this guy. And so she came across my Facebook um, when I first started the film, trying to find eyewitnesses. And she messaged me, and she said that um, she's all, has anyone ever got photos of this thing? And I said uh, I haven't got any. And she's all, well, I think I have. And she sent me pictures of like um, she believes that she sees his face. So now we're going into a, a realm where. People don't just see him in shadow. They see his actual face. And But she also caught photos of him in shadow, like in the background um, of her photos. And the weird part yeah. about her story is that she says that she doesn't remember taking these photos. She just woke up and the, the time says like 2 or 3 a.m. And it, she doesn't remember taking these photos. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. I, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, you know, people listening, you know, just pause this while you're listening to this. Get on your search engine, go into Google, and type in Hatman, and click on images. <laughs> You'll see all these different illustrations based on people's stories of what they see. It's, it's just incredible. And they're all, there's so many different similarities and then nightmarish things that are branching out. So... You put this documentary together, you've got some footage, you know, some photos, and you start interviewing people. What 
Have you found any new information or insight into what this hat man is? Because I'm sure my listeners are wondering, well, who the hell is this hat man? Yeah, um, the the more I did research on it, it was almost sometimes as if I was led to find certain information on this hat man, which was interesting. Mm-hmm. And But I did come across, one of the theories I have on it is that the hat man image itself, it's almost as if this whatever you want to call it, interdimensional entity or a dark spirit has attached itself to this image of a man in a hat and coat mm-hmm. to use it mm-hmm. as like a form of like a, a sigil to project it to the masses so that it's easier to manifest into people's lives. That's what I came across because wow. its image was all over. Like um, there's a wine called Sandman wine and that image of the hat man is on the wine or uh, wow. Don Julio uh, drink has the hat man on it. Um, and then we also, um, in the film, we go into detail that this Hatman image and aesthetic is all over like pop culture, like on music albums and films. Well, Clint Eastwood, the man with no name. Exactly. And he's got the, the hat on and the, uh, whatever you call it, the poncho, whatever's over him. You know, he stands in that, you know, iconic pose and it's very similar to what you see. And there's the time he wears the coat, the raincoat at one point as well. And it was that era. So you also always wonder, I mean, well, we got the era with the cowboys and stuff, with the hats and stuff like that during that time period. You know, what is iconic about that fashion for this thing to take on that image? Mm-hmm. Well, one of the, what comes to mind is one of the eyewitnesses told me that she said, have you ever seen those street watch signs, the neighborhood watch on it? I'm like, yeah. And she's all with the little burglar dudes with the hat and the coat. Oh. She's all like, he kind of looks like that. And she's all, and I think what the hat man is doing is, she said, he's he's tapping into what we're all subconsciously afraid of, like intruders. And I was like, mm. that's fascinating. I bet you, I, I was like, I believe that's a connection right there. So... Has and this is just a joke, and I'm not trying to make a joke of this because I, I've seen this thing myself. So, the the what is it? The Hamburglar? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the Hamburglar from Jack in the Box. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The character looked like the Hat Man. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think that's a mistake. I think that because the latest I went back to these Hat Man sightings was around like. 1920s maybe before that you don't really mm-hmm. get anything like that you get like a guy in a like a, a suit but no hat but after that point you kind of get the hat man right and then you get the spy versus spy the cartoon and the comic strip and then you've got you know but then we go into like the men in black because when we had all these ufo sightings people were seeing men in black then they would be in di- slightly maybe different suit they might not have the overcoat that we sometimes see with the hat man But you would see these people in a suit that would have, you know, glasses on. Sometimes they'd have those hats. Um, Do you think there's any connection at all to maybe the men in black? Yeah, um, this didn't really make the film, but we were, I was going to go into any connections with the men in black. The only thing that I came close to for me in my research was I interviewed a gentleman who he believed he was abducted um, by aliens and he seen the hat. He said he woke up and he was on like the, you know, like a table type thing in a room. He claimed he saw two alien grays at the foot of the, the table. Mm. And then behind him was this dark figure all in shadow with a hat on and a, a long coat. And he said, wow. he's all, I always thought it was the men in black. He's all, but when you explain the hat man, he's all, it sounds more like as if it was more of the hat man. Cause he said it had like, it was very creepy. And then his wife, also seen the hat man on a different occasion in the house next to um, her doorway. And she described the same exact thing. Jeez. You know, that's the thing. It's a mystery. I know years ago I had a conversation with Rosemary Ann Guiley, uh, who recently passed away, bless her soul. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the djinn. We talked about shadow people, the hat man. And, you know, she's thinking maybe it's a djinn, this and that. And I'm wondering... If the hat man is some type of like dark agent, like if you talk about the alien thing, which is interesting because we thought, what if the hat man is some type of demonic entity, the devil that doesn't want us to see his true features because then we'd know who he is. He wants to remain a mystery because it creates more fear. But then what if it is some type of interdimensional alien race to where there's some 
being that is really horrific looking if we saw it. So it covers itself up so we don't see that part of it. Otherwise, we'd know exactly who the enemy or who this thing is. You know, there's just, there's that question, like some type of agent in the underworld uh, or interdimensional world. You know, we have our FBI, we have our CIA, we have our world leaders, um, delegates, that type of stuff. What if we're dealing with some type of spy or some type of thing in that dimension? Has any of your, your subjects, any of your people you interviewed, have they talked about anything like that? Yeah, they, um, they've had some theories on that, but the, the overwhelming a majority, they go, no, mm-hmm. it's death itself. That's what they say. They, they, really? go, they go, no, it's death, and I could feel it. And, and one, one witness says, and not like, one witness says, not like the warm kind of death, like, oh, my grandpa passed, and he's in a better place. She said, like, mm-hmm. a dark, like a dark, like a dark type of death. And then a couple other witnesses I interviewed, too, said the same thing. One of them, he said that when he seen the hat man, the feeling he got was a sense of dread as if he was looking over into the abyss about to die was his feeling. But it's not like that with everybody. Like with you, um, you felt creeped out, but you didn't feel like you were going to die, right? Uh, that's not true. Oh, really? Oh, oh, okay. Well, how, did, yeah. how, did you, how did you feel? What, what was the feeling? It wasn't just creeped out? Um, all right. It was February of 2014 is when I went to the Demon House in Indiana. And that's when I investigated with Zach the Demon House, Uh which people ended up getting to see on the Demon House, the lost footage. And that was a few months later that I was going through a really, really bad time in August and October where I was questioning my own mortality. And I saw this thing December, which is crazy. It's 12, 13, 14, which is kind of weird how it's a sequence of numbers because it was December 13th, 2014. But it was at 3.03 in the morning is what I have down approximately between 3 and 3.03. In January of that year, I've talked about this in my lectures, I almost died. So a month later, I almost died. I had a choice to make, um, and I knew this. I told some of my friends, you know, I'm going to Costa Rica. I have a feeling I'm going to die. And my friend's like, well, then don't go. I said, no, but I have a feeling I have to go. And I started getting these signs with the number 515. And as I got the numbers, three sequences of 515s that were all significant. I get to Costa Rica. My buddy meets me there. We're at the pool. I told him what happened. I said, there's something going on. And I told him the messages. He said, well, ask the universe for another message. And I did. And then four or five days later, you know, there were some things that happened. And then I was walking on the street with this girl. And uh, she had delivered a message to me when I said the message. This girl tapped me on the shoulder and says, I have a message for you. I said, oh my God, the universe just did it. They just did exactly what I asked. So I said, okay. She told me all these things I needed to change about myself. So I was so happy. I'm like, all right, just walk with me. She goes, I'm not going home with you. I said, I don't want you to go home with me. The universe just used you as an instrument to deliver a message. This is incredible. I feel, I feel wonderful. So we're walking and this, this car pulls up. She goes, you know what? You should take your watch off and, and quit flashing your iPhone because, you know, we could get mugged and they could take that. I said, no, nah, no one's going to touch me. I know martial arts. I can fight. I was a little cocky, okay? <laughs> but I was also happy because the universe just spoke to me, so nothing bad's going to happen. But this car keeps going around and around and around, it's, and its windows were, til- were tinted. And I realized, and then I got that feeling, they're stalking us. They're going to do something. So part of me is like, all right, go ahead. What are you going to do? What are you going to do, right? Come on, get out of the car. Let me see what you look like, right? Well, the third time it came around, she's like really freaked out. And I'm not paying attention to her. That was part of the message from her. You need to pay attention to other people sometimes. And the universe says to me, choose. And I go, choose? Are you going to listen to her and get in a cab? And I'm like, there's no cab. We can't find a cab. Or are you going to stand up to this and then suffer your fate? And all of a sudden, a cab pulls out of nowhere in between the alleyway, between the car and us. Out of nowhere. Oh my God, there's a cab. We've been looking for a cab for the last 20 minutes, half hour. And it says, choose. And I said, fine. You know, because I'm stubborn. I'm a Taurus. I said, all right, fine. Get in the car. She jumps in the car. The car that was stalking us floors it behind this cab, slams on the brake, starts honking and flashing the lights, and then takes off. Now, we're both safely in the car. 
cab driver goes, wow, you guys are lucky. They wanted you. And then all of a sudden I look at her. She goes, I told you this flash goes through me. And I see this image of me hooked up to equipment. I'm in some coma or when you're near death. And I see myself barely breathing, all bloodied. And then that fades away. And I'm like, holy cow. If I wouldn't have gotten the cab and I would have stood up to them, they either would have stabbed me or shot me. That would have fulfilled the prophecy head of me dying. But because I said to the universe, give me a sign of whatever I need to change, whatever I need to work on. And because I used my frill will to say, you know what, I'll listen, I'll do something. And then I finally listened by choosing the right decision. It saved my life. So I wouldn't have known this without you saying this. I saw the hat man December 13th, 2014. A month before I went, January of 2015. Wow. Well, what comes to mind for me is that a lot of witnesses associate him with, um, like, well, like I just talked about, like, death itself, right? Like, uh, either coming before or after someone's death. Right. And one of the eyewitnesses, um, he, he kept seeing the hat man before a family member died. And uh, he even seen him at a, uh, his mom passed away, and he seen the hat man at his at his mom's funeral. He was behind a tree, off in the distance. Jesus. Um, and yeah, he's very much associated with death. Or um, some of my witnesses I interviewed. Um, uh, one guy said he's all, you know, you mentioned that the hat man is seen around suicide or depression. I'm like, yeah. And he's all, well, now that you mentioned that, he said, um, at that time when I seen the hat man, I was suffering from deep depression. So it seems that this entity is either the author of depression or feeds off (laughs) depression or death itself. Well, that goes into like, because negative entities, you know, demonic entities, stuff like that, like to feed off of pain, oppression, violence, and all those types of things. Yeah, yeah. And then um, in the film, I also interviewed um, Rosemary Ellen Guiley in the film. And uh, she talks about okay. that. Like if, if, if um, they like to feed on states of depression, um, hopelessness, um, yep. anger, and uh, something else. But basically, yeah, basically, uh, basically um, negative emotions. Yeah, she used to think too. I, didn't she think that it was a gin? Possibly a jinn? Yeah, she leaned more toward that it was a jinn. But uh, to me personally, I think that uh, jinn, demon, interdimensional entity, I personally think they're the same thing, to be honest. Just different okay. different yeah. names. Yeah. So you said that one person saw like a skull on the, the entity, right? Oh, yeah, that was me. Uh, that was during a, a dream invasion or maybe some type of uh, demonic. I call them demonic attacks. I think it's more it, it feels more like a demonic attack. To right. Me. Right. Um, and the, it was weird because um, shortly after that, I was on Facebook and someone drew their rendition of, of the hat man or like a, a, a horror movie type thing. I don't know what it was. It was like their own artwork or something. And they drew like a hatted figure with half a skull face. I'm like, that's exactly what I've seen in my dream. And I never seen that before. It was almost as if the, the hat man was saying, yeah, that was me. Yes. So that it did takes, that. Like, like bringing like, like confirmation. So it takes authority for it. Like, I still don't know when this thing appeared at the edge of the bed with my girlfriend at the time and was pointing at her. It's like, why? What was the sign? And I knew it was a sign. I said, well, maybe this had something to do with me, but yet... It hasn't come to pass yet. And this was some type of prophetic manifestation. You know, I didn't know, and I still don't know. I mean, when I saw that thing staring, but now that you say, maybe it does know something that's forthcoming, kind of like when you look at the Mothman prophecies, you know, the the problems that occurred after the Mothman was seen. So most of the people that have seen this believe it has something to do with death. Yeah, the majority, they either say, it's death itself, or they go, it's Lucifer, it's the devil. Wow, okay. That's the, yeah. that's the vibe it get, that, that it gives off. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the vibe it gives off. Yeah, and that's, I would lean, I mean, from my experience, it seemed like, well, geez, you know, I've been to the demon house, and then I almost died in January, and I was going through a very, very challenging part of my life. It, you know, I couldn't, things couldn't really be worse at the time. It seems like it would be something demonic hiding underneath that. Because then if I saw this, you know, reptilian type creature or this demonic entity, I'd know, okay, I'm dealing with the devil. But then hiding there, there's that mystery that it's, it's kind of rubbing it in your face, but you don't know who it is, you know? 
Ah, uh, yeah, exactly. Right. And that's what the other witnesses say. That's what the other witnesses say. And they say that, uh, it's, it's, uh, some of them say that it's meant to throw you off because it's a guy in old school clothing. Yeah. Well, that's what mm-hmm. the, the men in black did. I mean, probably a completely different scenario. They would try to throw people off thinking that it's the CIA and everything, but yet they believe this was possibly clones or some type of aliens trying to cover up their tracks or maybe a certain species of aliens that were sending out these delegates to get people to be quiet or to find out what they think and know because some of these aliens that are visiting don't want people to really know why they're here. Um, I studied a lot of UFO lore and, 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 and had a few experiences myself. And so I've always been fascinated by what the research is and what the theories are. This, this hat man is still, you know, just, just still a mystery. Has anybody else in your family or relatives seen this hat man? Yeah, one of the most disturbing ones was um, uh, my sister seen him uh, maybe uh, fairly recently. Um, I'm trying to think probably like four months ago maybe. I was just finishing up editing the whole film. And then uh, she actually told me two weeks later she was too scared to bring it up. She almost like was in denial about it. But she said she was. Um, it was four in the morning and she was driving to the, uh, to the gym. I guess to get there early or something like that. And uh, she's driving. It's still kind of dark outside. And uh, she looked down at her phone to change um, a song because she had her phone attached to the the car. And so she looks up while she's driving to make sure he knows she's driving still. And then this hat man, about seven feet tall this time, uh, kind of a bluish hue, though. He's still dark in shadow, but more like a bluish hue. And he was in the middle of the road. And she she swerved oh like God. she thought she was gonna hit somebody. <laughs> she goes around him and then she looks in her rearview mirror and he's still there. And she's all like, she knew what it was because she knew I was doing a documentary about that. And she freaked out. Kyle, that's like Jeepers Creepers. Exactly. <laughs> I would say I would say too that that movie's probably not an accident. It is probably they probably they were probably influenced with that. That is, I, I tell you what, the very first one was one of the most startling, scariest movies I've seen at the time compared to, of course, like when I first saw Exorcist as a kid. That movie really scared the hell out of me because you didn't know what this thing looked like until the end, but it was just so... It was like a ghoul. It was a ghoul, basically, mm. you know? And it was, here it was, broad daylight. He's seeing this thing. He's getting in the car, going to ride him over. It, just, it had really good suspense to it and everything. Um... But then, you know, now we're dealing with reality that we've got this guy running around with the hat and a, you know, like an overcoat on. So you've had your family members that have had experiences. You know, some of the listeners are probably going to be wondering, the people that you've interviewed, have any of them even heard of the hat man before they experienced it? Um, I would say no. Maybe one has heard of the hat man before okay. seeing him, but the majority of them say mm-hmm. that's one of the, the, the disturbing parts about it was they say, you know, I've never heard of him. I see him like they, they have their encounter and then they always get the vibe. Google it. Look it up. Google it. So they go to the, they, yeah, they go to the computer, right. look it up, and then they're shocked that this thing is like a worldwide thing. Yeah, it is. What was like uh, one of the most unique stories from another country that you heard? Yeah, this guy, uh, I believe he was from the UK, and he's in the film a couple of times. Um, he said his house was always kind of haunted, like uh, drawers opening and closing, um, footsteps around the house. So he knew his house was haunted, but they never really seen apparitions or anything. But one day, uh, he's playing video games. At the time, he was around, I believe, 12 or something. He was playing video games, and he heard, like, a noise on the other side of his bedroom. So he looked over by the doorway, and not in the doorway, but next to the doorway was this hat man. He was about eight feet tall in the room, so that's pretty tall. And But this time, he had the hat and coat, but he had a face this time that looked like reptilian eyes and a huge, a huge grin oh, with, like, sharp teeth on there, like needle teeth and, like, shark teeth kind of. 
and he freaked out. Gosh. He started screaming. His mom rushed upstairs, didn't know what was going on. And he said the hat man just disappeared. There was no smoke, no fade away. It was just like a cut. Like he was there and then he's just not. God, it's just confusing because then you got like, okay, alien, demonic, uh, death. So alien, demonic, wanting people to die, wanting people to go through hard times. You know, it's like, all right. You got to wonder though, does the military, FBI, CIA, whatever you want to call it, whatever group they got that investigates this type of stuff, what do they know? They're not telling us. The government has got to know something about this. Been going on for so long, you know, they're going to they're gonna pursue this. So the, the question is, especially with all the research and stuff they've done with remote viewing and then with interdimensional, they've got to know. You know, I just wonder, what is it they know they're not telling us? Have you found anything? And, and I'm just, I'm speculating this. I haven't seen any research or any documents regarding this. I've seen stuff regarding other things, but have you come across any of that yet to where there's government connections or theories? Um, I have. I don't know if they're that trustworthy because sometimes some okay. of these eyewitnesses, I do believe that not all of them, but some of them, I feel like this entity is drawn toward people with mental illness, if okay. that makes sense. Yes. And I believe some of them um, are not really trustworthy. I believe they might have seen the hat man, but I think that it gets mixed up with other mental illnesses that are kind of involved there. Okay. But there was one guy that does come to mind is I posted um, someone's story on the hat man on Facebook. This guy found this story and he claimed that he's seen this entity in an underground base in um, Jesus. Uh, it's a famous base. Oh my gosh. I, I totally forgot about Dulce? the story. No, it wasn't Dulce. It was, oh, okay. um, uh, what's it called? It's on the tip of my tongue. It's okay. Um, I'm sorry. I think I forgot it, but it, it was, uh, he said he claimed he's seen this hat man in an underground base. And he said, um, what they would do is, um, he was having a cigarette break in one of this, 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 uh, hallway. And he said, they, they have this alarm that goes off where if they're moving certain materials or certain people or objects, whatever, everyone has to go back in their little offices and their rooms. Hmm. And, um, but this time he didn't. And he's, and then so one of the guards or something came and said, sir, you have to go. And he's like, okay. So as he went in and then went to close the door, just looking up real quick, he's seen, it looked like he's all, I kid you not. He's all, I saw these two men. One was in like a, a long coat and hat and another, another guy looked just like him, but they looked dead. Like their skin, it looked like he looked like, he said they looked like corpses, but living like as if something else was animating them. And he said, and it looks like what you described the hat man to be almost exactly. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know what, you know, he's a, you know what it looked like? He's all, it looked like um, Jim Carrey in the mask. If he had a white face, he's all, that's exactly what it looked like. And I told him that's exactly how some people see the hat man. They see him that it looks like a, a plain canvas, like no eyebrows, no hair, just like a pale white face um, uh, with no facial, uh, like no hair if they see him, but see, that's the connection. I kind of like, is it more toward the men in black or, or is he talking about a men in black story, not the hat man, but that's the closest I can think of that was regarding like alien stuff. Oh, and he also said they had, it was, these men were pushing a body and he thought it might've been an alien body or something in on like a, a, a slab. You know, what's not so crazy about that is, I mean, you look at the, the icon of the, the cigarette man on X files, you know, that he would wear silver coat. Sometimes I think he wore a hat and he would always smoke a cigarette and he'd be this mystery. That is kind of interesting. But I remember when I was doing my magazine in the 90s called Unknown Magazine, and I would get on the phone and call people or I would travel and go interview people for stories for the magazine. And I remember this guy, he says, you got to meet a friend of mine. He drives trucks does deliveries and he told me about this delivery he did that scared the hell out of him because he saw something he wasn't supposed to see he had to drive up to wisconsin to there's a there's a factory a company there and i can't remember the name of it but they've always been involved in some type of top secret research and chemicals and stuff like that so he, he was given these coordinates and directions to specifically drive um a certain speed to not stop for anyone and he said if he got pulled over by the police, he was supposed to give him this phone number to call. So sure enough, he's driving the semi late at night. 
he's going to speed. He gets pulled over. Police officer comes up. He's like, uh, you know, I, I'm doing a delivery. And the guy's like, yeah, let me see your driver. He goes, well, I'm supposed to give you this number. And he says, hang on. He goes and calls a number. The police officer says, okay, go ahead. And doesn't question anything else. Tells him to leave. So anyway, he finally gets there. And he said it was hidden on this road. He got confused with this turning point to go left and right. He wasn't sure. So he called up the number and they says, where are you? He says, we'll send it. So a Jeep comes out and escorts him through this, these bushes and trees that opens up a gate and they go through this thing. So they have him back up the truck and they said there was military personnel there. So they back up the truck and they tell him to stay. Uh, he comes out. He shows him a clipboard of what everything that's being delivered he doesn't know what the cargo is. Okay, he was never told. He was just told he's supposed to deliver it, um, finish it, and then leave once they, they are done unloading it. So one of the military personnel tells him to stay right there in front of the cab and not to leave and until they tell him to. And he says, don't move. So he says one of, he hears a door open, something open like a garage, and this forklift comes out and starts taking stuff. But then he decides to kind of peek around the corner because he's curious now. So what the hell's going on? And he sees this light that comes out of the garage. And then he sees this, this energy form, like a person that's white, that's glowing. And they're only a few feet off the ground. Like they're hovering off the ground. And they're walking next to like some type of commander or military personnel with some soldiers, and then he says something else that's in a cloak, like a coat with a, with a hat on. And he didn't talk too much about the cloak and the hat on. I just remember him telling there was some other guy that was, you couldn't tell who he was, but he had a hat on and a cloak. But he saw this other energetic being going, and they went to the back of the truck, and they take out, and he sees just about one half of the box they open up, and they pull out this vial that has these embryos in it. And he's like, what the hell? And they look like just embryos, like babies, Right? And then it seems that the thing says, okay, or whatever, and they load it, and they put it on, it goes, and they go back into the thing. And he's, like, terrified at this point. He says he's shaking. He can't wait to get out there. They come back. They give him the money or whatever else it was. He says, okay, thank you, better. And he gets out of there, and he says, you know, I, and that was it. He says, let me get a hold of him, see if he wants to talk about it. And then he got back and says, he says, hell no. He does not want this story going out in a magazine because he feels they'll figure out it's him, and he, you know. He doesn't want people coming after him. So I'll never forget that story. I was told that in the late 90s. So the question is, is there was obviously some type of alien uh, entity connection here, but there was a guy dressed like the hat man that was walking alongside them. So, you know, do I believe this story? I never got to meet the guy, but I'll never forget it. <laughs> I believe that there is an alien connection to this this hat man phenomena because um, I'm reminded of a, a, a man I interviewed. I actually known him for a while. He was a, a friend of my dad's. Um, he before he seen the hat man, he seen he woke up. Uh, this is back in the '60s, actually. Um, I just remember this story. Uh, also, I, I didn't really include it in the film because I didn't really have that much time. But he's in the film, but just not the alien part. Because we talk about the alien part in a different part. Anyways, um, this is in the 60s. Mm -hmm. He was about like five years old. Um, he wakes up in the middle of the night, and uh, he looks at the foot of his bed, and uh, there's these about four to five what you would call alien grays looking at him at the foot of the bed. And he didn't know what that was <laughs> at the time. He's just a kid. So uh, he started freaking out, so he reached a to push his brother slept with him in the bed. So he went to push his brother like, what the heck? What, what are you seeing this? You know? And when he was about to do that, he said, these things just went down like an elevator, like into the ground. Like they just went down. And then, um, a couple yeah, years yeah. later, uh, he's seen the hat man, um, in his bedroom <laughs> as well, which is also very strange. Yeah. There's gotta be some connection then. I mean, with all this stuff that you've done, I mean, you've done this documentary that's coming out, so it's really exciting for you, and it'll be interesting to see what the feedback is and all the people that are going to come forward with their own stories. And obviously, this is a big accomplishment for you because you've been working on this for two years, so congratulations on finally getting it out there. Do you hope to prove the existence of the Hat Man? What is it you're hoping from this getting out there in the public? Yeah, um, when, when, uh, I'm not really hoping to prove the hat man or anything. I just really wanted to document the phenomena for what it was okay. and then just let people decide 
from the information what they think it is, if they believe it or not. I, I really don't care, but I really think it's important to get this out there that it's a real uh, strange phenomenon going on. I mean, it's like thousands upon thousands of people across the globe are seeing the same guy. There has to be something there, you know what I mean? And it can't just be a, 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 a global hallucination because that opens up the door to other possibilities too. So there's something we need to um, expand our awareness on what's possible and look at all possibilities, not just uh, close – be close-minded, I guess. But I'm really just hoping to um, let people think, maybe open up some different... Because uh, we, we touch different topics throughout the film. There's also a connection with DMT and ayahuasca. We talk about the connection with UFO um, abduction, with other shadow people, other entities, like the black-eyed kids. Um, so it really... When you when you study the hat man, it really goes into different... Um, uh, avenues, I guess I would say. Yeah, no, it does. Well, there's there's so many other theories of what it actually is. That's what makes this so compelling is the mystery behind this. Who the heck is this guy? You know, is it uh, just some scrawny little guy and everything? Go hello, <laughs> you know, playing a joke, on, <laughs> playing a joke on us, right? It's not <laughs> okay. I just had to throw some humor in there, and we wish it was, and we'd be like, "Hey, that wasn't funny, man." But it's you know that would probably be a funny Saturday Night Live skit, right? Yeah. Um, but this is real. I mean, this is terrifying people. I know it. You know, when my girlfriend saw this, she was terrified, and when I saw this, I felt this overwhelming sense of fear, and then it was gone, and that that feeling and emotion was fleeting. But I want to know. But then the question is, do we want to know? Because it might open up a whole nother Pandora's box of our existence and what's going on within this world. You know, I don't know. Maybe it's the mystery. So Kyle, tell us, you've got this thing premiering September 13th, 2019. Tell my listeners where they can find it. Yeah, uh, they can watch the film. Um, I'm premiering it on Vimeo.com. So it's Vimeo On Demand. Um, and they can just type in the title. It has to be the full title, though, to get the actual um, product. So okay. uh, it's The Hat Man, Documented Cases of Pure Evil. And they can also buy the DVD on Amazon. And also, it's also going to be available on Amazon uh, Prime Video for streaming as well. That's fantastic. That's probably where I'm going to watch it since I got Amazon Prime. And uh, so what do you plan to do? Obviously, all your energy, all your time and finances have gone into this. What are you looking at in the future after this? Anything you're thinking about doing, or are you just going to see where this takes you? Um, I'm looking into some other uh, more narrative work, uh, maybe some short films, maybe working on a script after this. Um, but if I'm interested, I might touch on other subjects that are kind of um, uh, also a little strange, like the hat man. Um, what comes to mind right now, I wouldn't mind making a documentary just on um, black eyed people or black eyed kid phenomena. That oh, would be, be cool. interesting too. So we'll see where that, where that goes, but that would also be interesting because we touch upon that in the film as well. The black eyed kids. Some people see the hat man with the black eyed kids. Which yeah. Is if you get, if, if you do do that, reach out to my good friend, David Weatherly. He wrote a book about the black eyed kids and, uh, he knows a lot about that. So he'd be a great person to interview and get some stories from as well. But, you know, the question I'm really saying, like, what did you go to film school or you just decided to go and do something like this? Uh, I did some um, I did some film classes here and there, but not really film school. It's way too expensive. <laughs> right. So I'm kind right, of just doing right. this where I kind of make my own material, <laughs> see how see how it goes. Um, but no, I've just always been interested in film since I was younger. And then uh, I think it's a good marriage with paranormal things and film just really stick together like glue. I want to thank you for coming on. This was a really interesting interview with you with some of these stories, and I know all my listeners are going to love it. For my listeners, you know, definitely check out the links that I will have online at Planet Paranormal that will take you to Vimeo and Amazon Prime and Amazon DVD so you can watch this. Check out the trailer, too, so you can get a little glimpse of what to expect, and then let me know what you think. But Kyle, thank you very much for coming on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm excited for the film and excited for people's reactions and your reaction as well. I really look forward to your reaction yeah. to this film. <laughs> yeah, I will let you know. But for everybody listening, 
Thank you. This is Chris Fleming and my guest, Kyle Macias. See you next time. planetparanormal.com and on iTunes, also YouTube, as well as other streaming services. You can check out Chris's website at www.christopherfleming.com, also ghostoutlet.com, and chris-fleming.genbook.com.